We'll get some more reaction to this now from Dr. Salia Asan, who has worked in hospitals throughout the pandemic and very sadly lost her father to the virus. Thanks for joining us, Salia. And John Ferret's father died in June last year after obeying the lockdown restrictions throughout the pandemic. Thanks both for joining us. Dr. Asan, if I can ask you first, can you remember what you were doing in May 2020? Yeah, so in May 2020, instead of going to enjoy the fine weather at a garden party, I was dressed in PPE, sweating, uh, uh, along with my colleagues, um, working with patients in our contamination suites within emergent, our emergency department, um, definitely not going to any social events. It must have been especially hard then also to, to lose your father to the virus. Tell us what happened. When did he die? My father passed away uh, in December 2020 at the second wave, <clears throat> again, due to the fact that I believe uh, not the country not locking down in time to stem the severity of the second wave. Uh, all of these things I'm really looking forward to being unpicked in the COVID uh, independent inquiry as and when it happens. Um, but during that year um, and in May, Myself, my siblings, we're all doctors, five of us. We stayed away from our father throughout the year. Very limited meetings done through doors and windows and phones and, and video screens to, number one, ensure that we didn't pass on any infection, but also to stick as close as possible to the rules because we felt in our positions as healthcare workers and in you know some sort of position of authority within healthcare, we had examples to set. We couldn't be told to be telling our patients and the public to mm. stick to rules if we weren't going to be sticking to them. That's how we lived our lives. And we still stick to the rules now. Um, you know, we have to. This isn't a game and this isn't a choice. These measures actually save lives. And I can hear the anger and sadness in your voice as well when you're describing that. And John, I, I wonder what you're thinking when you're hearing that, because you lost your father, Ken, last year. But I understand he was ill for quite some time, wasn't he? Which presumably means that it was difficult for you to see him. Yeah, and um, my family's uh, experience would be very similar to the last speaker's, and no doubt very similar to... Uh, millions of other families uh, across the country. Uh, my dad's last 18 months, uh, he had no mobility in essence. Uh, there were rules in place right up to his uh, death in June 2021. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, he was in a care home setting. And again, we couldn't see him, uh, only go and visit him and see him for a window. Uh, when he came out in May 2020, uh, we weren't able to visit him. I would have him on the phone pleading with me to go around to visit him. He didn't really understand uh, why there was a law in place to prevent uh, people from seeing their family members. Uh, and we all knew and he knew that uh, that he his condition was getting worse. Uh, but we obeyed the rules uh, right up to his funeral in June 2021 when we couldn't have all the family at the funeral. Uh, so we obeyed the rules and have been obeying the rules and are still obeying the rules. Uh, and, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just shocking when the people who are setting the rules uh, haven't been obeying them and indeed uh, are actually laughing at us uh, in terms of their responses. I'm so sorry that you both lost your fathers in those circumstances. It sounds absolutely ghastly. Um, stay with us, if you will, because I know a lot of our viewers have been responding to this story, haven't they, CL? Yes. What have they been saying? So heartbreaking to listen to, and I've got some more heartbreaking messages for you as well, sadly. Uh, first up, we've had uh, Sheena from Hastings. She says uh, her mother was in a funeral home. Her mother was at her funeral. Um, she was at her mother's funeral. I'm so sorry, this is actually just so sad. We had two people removed from the cemetery as you could not uh, be allowed to have more than 10 people. This is after saying goodbye to her via FaceTime from the hospital, watching my mother die alone. Craig from Dewsbury said, I followed all the restrictions all the way through the pandemic. Enough is enough now with these parties. We should 
Why should we listen if they don't follow the rules themselves? Rob from North Yorkshire says, having lost both parents in the space of just nine days during the first lockdown, I think it's absolutely sickening. And Boris, as well as others, need to resign. Um, and we also asked, what were you doing in May 2020? Uh, Caroline in Colchester said, I didn't leave my house. I don't even remember the day as they were all the same. And Andrea in Halifax says, in May 2020, as I was part of a vulnerable group, I only was allowed to open a window. I was not even allowed to sit in my garden. Boris has made a mockery of the whole pandemic, Jean. Thank you, Ciel, and thank you very much for all those messages. We don't have a government minister to put your points to, um, and we know that Boris Johnson wasn't in the House of Commons either uh, to respond to these criticisms. But if I could just ask my guests, he is turning up tomorrow, we think, for Prime Minister's questions. If you had a chance to put a question to him, what would you say? Um, can I ask uh, the doctor first? Celia. I would, I would really ask him, you know, does he feel that he is right now for the country in his position? He's, a, he, he's the Prime Minister, he has a position of leadership. It now appears that his position is actually damaging to public health because we are already hearing about people suggesting that they shouldn't really stick to rules because if the Prime Minister and his government don't, then why should they? So for the sake of the public good, would he consider standing down? And John? Yeah, I feel very similar to, to that, that uh, I think uh, the public is weary. We, we've had, we had the Dominic Cummings thing, we had Matt Hancock, we had the earlier Downing Street parties that were revealed before Christmas. And I think the country is really weary of it. Uh, and but but I you know clearly the polls are indicating that people feel Boris Johnson should resign, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's that's something mm -hmm. that needs to happen in order for for the country to try and uh, you know try and get back together again uh, because I think it's uh, it, it's really divisive. Like you say, it could undermine the whole public health approach. Uh, so I think he needs to do the right thing. I'm not confident that he will. He's got no. Uh, record of doing the right thing but I would hope that on this occasion he finally realises that he needs to do the best thing for the country. John Ferret, Dr Hassan, thank you both.